boys and girls. Today we're going to be making recyclable art. No, it is not artwork that we're going to recycle when we're finished, but rather we're going to find objects from our recycling bin to use in our artwork. So let me show you what you're going right, to need. So what you will need today is some sort of paper here, but you could use white or any other color. Um, you'll need some sort of scissors, something to glue with, whether it's a glue bottle or a glue stick. And then you need to find some objects from a recycling bin. So I'm using some old envelopes from bills that I don't need anymore. Ask your parents, they probably have some from their mail. Um, what I look for is the stuff on the inside because the paper actually has some very interesting um, patterns a lot of times. They're not all the same, so you might wanna just look and see what you can find at your house, your home. Um, I'm also going to be using some cardboard, either from cereal boxes, cracker boxes, macaroni and cheese, whatever you have. What I'm actually looking for are just different colors. And what I'm going to do is cut these into some shapes. All right, boys and girls, so I've gathered, I've cut up some different shapes using a variety, sometimes uh, circles or triangles, rectangles. Those are all geometric, semi-circle. You can also do organic shapes, which are curvy, bendy shapes that you would find in nature. So any of those kind of shapes will work really well for this collage. So you need to have something to glue your pieces to. You can use a, a piece of paper, could be any color. Um, I, in fact, sometimes like to use the back of uh, a box. This is from Ritz Crackers. Uh, so whatever you happen to have on hand is what you should use. So before you go cutting any of these things up, please make sure you have permission from your parents. Before you glue anything, it is a good idea to lay out your design. So there's three body parts to insects. There's the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So I am going to do, because I was missing some of my pieces, I'm going to do this for the middle. I kind of like to put the middle in first. And I've tried to create a variety of shapes, not using all the same kind. So I'm going to do this semicircle like a little bit, and then um, I'll use this for the ab abdomen. So head, thorax, abdomen. Now it looks like it's a little long for my paper. That's okay. It's kind of fun to have it going off the paper. Now I could just glue this on in a straight line like you see here in a nice diagonal line or if I want to make this a little more interesting I can give my insect some movement by turning those pieces, bending them so it looks like it has a curve to the body. So once you get those three, glue on each body part, once you get the three main ones then it's time to start working on the smaller details. So the things like the legs, the eyes, that's what you would want to work on. I think I had some really nice looking circles that I cut out earlier. I'm going to use those. Oh yes, nice big red eyes for my bug. Must have eyes. Now, if you want, you could probably put even more than one eye. Some, some insects do have more th than just two eyes. So, also, insects have legs. And insects have six legs. Spiders, if you want to make a spider, you can make that too. I'm just scared of spiders, so I won't make spiders. Um, need six legs. Let me use these triangles that I cut out. They're long and skinny. Now, you don't always have to put them just sticking straight out either. You could make this look like it's moving by bending them going different directions or even cutting into them and making it, I'll show you with one leg here, cut into this triangle, not throwing away anything here, but you can cut into one just to see how it looks and you can make it look like it is really bending that way. Okay, once you've got the legs, get those glued on too. Okay, so I'm gluing on my last couple of legs here. And now I think it's time to think about a couple other details. So you can take um, crayons or markers. 
have a Sharpie here, this will work. Um, crayons work pretty good. Sometimes you have to kind of color back and forth. I'm going to add just a little pattern to these eyes. You could use polka dots or other designs. Maybe you'd rather do curved lines or a big spiral on each eye. You can add some stripes or other patterns to your creature. Um, you know, one thing this insect and a couple of my other insects have been missing are wings. And I always hate to put the wings, I don't know if you know this, but the legs and the wings always come from the middle section of the insect, which is the thorax. They don't come out of the head, that would just be silly. Um, and they don't come out of the, the abdomen either because that's where the stinger and, and the other parts of the bug, the digestive system. The wings and the legs always come out of this middle section, this thorax. So um, if you want, you could just make big, beautiful wings and cover up the legs. But since I work so hard on those legs, I don't want to do that. I have this leftover, um, this, this is actually where I got that paper it was from an envelope. And I have this leftover here from it. Some of my envelopes that I get in the mail come with these, what they're called windows, um, because you can see through even though the envelope is sealed. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try using, I think, I think what I'm going to do, because I want to get two here, and I want to make sure I'm using this as much as I can. I think what I will do is make two, I'll kind of use this one because it's the smaller, I'll leave that on the top. I'm going to cut out two shapes. Now it can be kind of tricky, so go slow. I'm gonna cut out two shapes. Now these, most of the other shapes I was using on my insect were geometric, but these right here, I'm gonna cut this part off too. These are more shapes that you would find from nature. And I kind of like this transparent look to them. So I think I will use those now gotta be careful you can't put glue everywhere because you can see through it if you're using this part of the envelope so I'm just gonna put glue on the one end and that way and if you want to you can kind of bend those up so people can see them better you could draw little lines on them um, I think that looks kind of cool with those wings on there so let me show you oh that looks really neat so, I don't know if you guys can see that well in the camera or not, but it's kind of fun to see like that transfer. You can see right through it. Um, I've done a couple other insects here. So this one was moving. It's got a nice twist to it. This one has a nice curve. I put it on the leaf. <laughs> um, it has a nice curve. This one was the very first one I made, and I wasn't thinking about movement. I was just thinking about the colors and the shapes. And it's a very good... Um, it's almost completely symmetrical. If I were to divide it down the middle, it's almost matching exactly on the same on each side. But it's kind of just like frozen. It doesn't look like this insect is moving at all. I really do like that I added movement to these two insects because it does um, kind of make it look a little bit more interesting. So you can have a little fun uh, thinking of things that maybe you want to add you can keep adding more and more details the amount of detail you do is up to you um, so be creative have some fun and try to add a little movement into your picture and you just do that by adding a little bit of curve here and there straight lines make it feel like it is very still. So if you want your insect to look like it's moving, add a little curve. All right, if you have picture, if you can take a picture, post it to either Artsonia or to Seesaw. Remember, if it's on Artsonia, it stays in your digital portfolio for a long time, for many years to come. And, um, and on Seesaw and Artsonia, I can leave you comments. You can post to both also. All right, have a have fun making your insects. Bye.